Good evening. Being anointed with oil is something that might be strange to many of us. And yet, it is a practice that is used widely amongst many believers across the world. In Exodus, we see that the Lord gives commands for the way that He wants His people to live in relationship with Him. And there, He gives specific commands regarding the anointing oil that should be used and to those people that should be anointed. Let's listen to Exodus 30 from verse 22. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take the following fine spices, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much, that is 250 shekels of fragrant cinnamon, 250 shekels of fragrant cane, 500 shekels of cassia, all according to the sanctuary shekel, and a hen of olive oil. Make these into a sacred anointing oil, a fragrant blend, the work of a perfumer. It will be the sacred anointing oil. Then use it to anoint the tent of meeting, the ark of testimony, the table and all its articles, the lampstand and its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils, the basin with its stand. You shall consecrate them so they will be most holy and whatever touches them will be holy. Anoint Aaron, Aaron and his sons and consecrate them so they may serve me as priests. Say to the Israelites, This is to be my sacred anointing oil for the generations to come. Do not pour it on men's bodies, and do not make any oil with the same formula. It is sacred, and you are to consider it sacred. Whoever makes perfume like it, and whoever puts it on anyone other than a priest, must be cut off from his people. At least three things strike us from what is revealed in this part of Scripture. Firstly, is the fact that the purpose of being anointed is that by anointing something or someone, that person or that thing is made holy. Now, holy here means to be clean, to be, uh, you have to be clean, but it's also to be set apart, to be called and brought into a very specific purpose or specific action that needs to be completed. Secondly, we see that there's a focus on who should be anointed. Here the focus is on the priest, Aaron and his two sons. But in other Old Testament scriptures, we see how the kings and also the prophets were anointed. It was a way of putting them into service, calling them into service, proving and showing that they were the ones chosen for this specific task. But the most striking thing is all of the attention that is given to the oil in itself. This oil was a sacred oil. It was oil that was willed and manufactured according to the Lord's commands regarding to it. Therefore, it was oil with a specific recipe, with a specific method to be mixed together. And also, only it could only be used for the purposes of the Lord. It was the Lord's sacred anointing oil. And now you can say, isn't this a bit much just about oil? And yes, it is. If you lift this part of God's revelation out of the rest of His revelation throughout of, throughout of Scripture. But when we see it all in context, when we think of who the Holy Spirit is as the one that anoints each believer into service, into faith into a life dedicated and consecrated to serving the Lord, then we see that it is all in line with what anointing in the Old Testament was supposed to be. By anointing people, the Lord brought them in line. He made them participants in the way that He rules over and provides for the world that He created. And therefore, each priest, each king, each prophet had to be anointed so that they could live a life in service of the Lord. 
Good evening.